everyone, and welcome to our Team Tuesday program. I'm Miss Naomi, and I'm the children's assistant, class twin assistant at the headquarters branch. Today's program is Creating Fantastical Creatures, and we're joined by our gra um, by graphic designer and illustrator, Chris Campbell. Today, we're going to learn how to draw mythical and fairy tale creatures using a pencil, which I have right here, um, and a piece of paper, which I have behind me. Um, and feel free to draw along with him. Um, a couple of things that we need to know before we go right into our program. Um, your mics have been muted, and the audience is set to view-only mode. Um, but the comment box is available for questions. So if you have a question, feel free to put it into the comment box below. And at the end of our session, we're going to do a Q&A session. Um, so feel free to ask him any questions um, about his artwork. Um, we would love to see your work. So please um, post it to our Facebook event, um, event post. And I'm going to let Mr. Campbell take it away. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, this is going to be a first for me, for sure, uh, doing a, a live stream like this. Um, I've, I've done classes around um, at uh, schools and libraries before, drawing all kinds of different things. Uh, um, I enjoy drawing robots and critters and creatures and monsters. So um, this is something that uh, I, I, I've been looking forward to. Um, so I'm glad that everyone has stopped in, but first I was gonna go over just a real quick, uh, a little bit about my background here. Let me switch over to this camera and move, sorry about the mess. I was uh, playing with some monsters here. Okay, so, um, so I'm a graphic designer and an illustrator, um, and a graphic designer basically takes information and they put it together um, in different forms, usually as logos or, or magazines or uh, books or all kinds of different things. Basically anything you see out and about is done by a graphic designer. Um, this is an example that I did for Duke's Mayonnaise. It's just a little cookbook. So I took all the information someone gave me and I put it in the boxes and put it around and took the photographs and, and things and put them into this cookbook. So as a graphic designer, you work with other people. Um, they give you information um, that you take and then you figure out how it best looks and then you go back and forth with your client. This is another thing I did as a book um, that has different text and, and images and everything. So uh, I got to choose kind of pictures to use for each layout. Um, and here's one of my illustrations on the back of the Avenger in kind of a cartoony form. Um, and here's another thing real quick. The, uh, this is done with a local uh, group in Greenville, South Carolina. Um, this was a bunch of kids, actually, that wrote stories, and I got to work um, with the group, and they created this book. Um, and we took all the images and illustrations that they drew and their stories, and I got to lay it out for them in this book um, with a group called Greenville Wordsmiths. So again, as a graphic designer, um, you can work with illustration and uh, kind of design go hand in hand. And this was something I got to do. Um, one of the newest things that I got to do recently that I'm really proud of was this book here is a children's book. Um, it's called Mystery on the uh, Swamp Rabbit Trail. And uh, I got to do all the illustrations for this book. Um, I did them on the computer, most of the stuff I do on the computer. But so again, uh, I didn't write this, someone gave me the words and then I worked with them to figure out what pictures to use best for um, their stories. So with any of this stuff, you're working with other people to kind of figure out what it is uh, that they want to do um, and how best you, your skills can, can do that. Um, this is something that I did all by myself, which is called Zigzag, and it's a comic book that I wrote and illustrated um, for a, a company in Virginia. So I got to do all of this together. So it was all me. The publisher let me do whatever I wanted to, so I just had fun. Um, it was just a one-color thing, but 
again, uh, that was a, that was just one project that I did get to do everything for. But usually you're going to do stuff with other clients and you're going to be working hand in hand with clients. So I just want to go over that real quick to let you know that if you do enjoy drawing, then that um, there's there's options in graphic design and that you could to look for work at newspapers or advertising agencies or basically anywhere. School district, the school districts have people that work there. Your teachers at school, they're kind of graphic designers and you've done graphic design um, when you work in uh, programs to do layouts and stuff for uh, presentations. So um, anyway, so graphic design and illustration kind of go hand in hand. But today we are gonna be drawing critters. I just wanted to give some overview of what I do. Um, and kind of give you that background. But um, so we're gonna do critters, uh, basically mythic monsters or fantasy creatures. Um, and I decided I'd do it on a whiteboard like I do in my live appearances so that it felt the same to me. And, and it's, you know, it's, it just, it's easier for me to kind of do this. and look over at you and we don't have to switch back and forth. But uh, if you have any questions about anything, about graphic design or whatever, or illustration, please feel, for, feel free to uh, put it in the chat. Um, so the first thing that uh, I was going to look at today was um, doing some uh, gargoyles. Um, and in looking at where to start and what to do, um, I just thought gargoyles were a cool creature to work with, work on. And I found some interesting information that the gargoyle name is actually from gargle, gargling water, because gargoyles used to be on buildings and castles, and they were used to take the water off the, the top of the building. So the water would come off of them. Anyway, over time, the name of that stuck and they became gargoyles. So most of them um, are just these monsters that are on top of buildings. Um, and then uh, there's tons of different mythological backgrounds for what they are and everything since then. But So we're going to do a gargoyle real quick today. So if you got your paper, we just need a pencil. And we're going to start with the eyes. Um, we're just going to do two circles for the eyes, one there. One there, like that. And then we want him to look angry. So uh, one thing you do is you put the eyelid, we're gonna do the eyelids at a slant like this. Right? And then we're gonna draw two ovals for the pupils, okay? Now, if you fill those pupils in, leave a little space at the top that's not filled in as a reflection, because that gives it a little more life. Even though these are supposed to be stone gargles, you want them to look kind of lively. So that's like a reflection. If you look in your eyes, you can see that. Um, all right, so the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna make him look more angry by putting some eyebrows on him. And we're just gonna do those with flattened ovals that come down at an angle like that. I'm gonna turn this a little more. Like that, okay? So we've got the eyebrows, um, and now I'm going to put a kind of a silly nose that I like to do. Um, it's it's a, a W with an extra hump. So we're going to start at the bottom inside of, of one of the eyes here. And you're going to go down, you're going to do a hump, and then you're going to do a bigger hump, and another hump, and back up. All right? So we've got that. Now I'm going to do a big mouth on this guy because I think he needs a... He needs to uh, make sure that people know he means business. We've got to put some teeth in this thing. So I'm going to start right up here where the eye is, okay? And I'm going to come in with a, uh, a line that goes down. And then we're going to go back up and curve a little bit like that. All right. And then I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to come out and curve back down and back up, all right? So hopefully you're not using up your paper. You still got room for a small body here because we're gonna be putting a body in on him real quick. Um, so we've got that there. Um, 
uh, I need to add something up here to make it look. We're going to put three little eye lines right there at that nose to kind of make it look like he's squinching it so he's a little more angry. And I'm going to put a line under each eye just like that just to give it a little more detail. All right, so we got that. Let's go in right where the pupil is, and we're going to put a fang that comes down like that. And then we're going to do another one over here like that. And then in the middle, let's do just four. One, two, three, four. You shape kind of silly teeth. All right. So now you got that. We're going to come in here on the bottom part here. We're going to put a tongue. So I'm starting at the bottom of this fang. I'm going to come up and over like that and then put a line in the middle so that looks like a tongue there. So he's ready to bite somebody and gobble them up. All right. So we got that. Um, come up here to each side of the mouth at the top. You can put a little line there because when your mouth comes up, it bunches up the skin. So that gives that kind of appearance. All right. So we got that. Now, let's put his head on. So um, I'm going to start right up here in the top middle and I'm going to come over. And it's going to be kind of close to all his feet. Um, so you come over and then down. And you're going to go down a little bit past the bottom of his mouth around. So he kind of has a squared off chin there. Like that. All right, and then just do the same thing on the other side there. All right. And then we're going to put a line like this to close that chin. So we've got that set. Okay. Now, to make sure that I'm going to be hitting everything, if you can see, yep, we're good. All right, so now I'm going to put his arms on. Um, we're going to start over here on this side. And since he's going to be squatting, if you know what a gargoyle does on top of buildings, usually they're squatting on things. Um, so we're going to have him squatting. And so that means his front arm is going to come down and touch the, the uh, ground in front of him. We're starting at the shoulder here. You're going to make a a line that goes out, swoops out, you got the shoulder, and then we're going to come and bring it all the way back in, almost to the middle here. Okay? Now that we have that, we're going to start there at the end of that line, and you're going to do like a backward C shape or a C shape that comes around like that, and then you're going to turn those into three little fingers here. So you go one, Two, three. three. You got it? All right. And then you're just going to go flat. We're going to go flat across here. Just draw a flat line that goes straight across a little bit and then stops there. Okay. And then we're going to come in from his hand. Leave that line alone. We're coming in from his hand. We're going to start on that line. And we're going to draw back up and over, follow that other line to about where his armpit would be there. And you can draw a little line to show that. Okay. Now we get to do the same thing on the other side. So you come over here, start at the same place with the shoulder, curve out, turn around, come over. And now you've got a line there to show, okay, that's where my uh, ending's gonna be. So bring your fingers around. What you can do with those is you can draw one like that and then just come over and do another one like that and then bring the third one back up and it's just going to connect on that line. All right. And then you just do the other part of the arm that comes up and back up to the armpit and draw a line there. Mine's a little wonky, but I am drawing. <laughs> So, all right, if you can see that, my light's glaring. All right, so now we have that. We need to put his back legs on, and they're going to be basically kind of like the front legs, but we're not going to overhang them. What we're going to do is we're going to take this line, and we're going to extend it over, and then you're going to drop it down on both sides that he's sitting on. That's the ledge, okay? 
Now, come over here where his hand is, and you're gonna you're gonna curve up just once for the foot like that, and then you're gonna come out with a curve, and you're gonna curve back in about the middle of that other arm like that. It looks like a two in there stuck. So then you can just put some curves in there for the toes on, on that leg. And we're gonna do the same thing over here on this side. Um, again, you can start at the top if you want to. Come out, go back in, and then curve down for the foot. And put some lines for toes. I used three uh, fingers and toes because in cartooning they use three because it's faster you don't have to draw the extra finger um, and that's an actual when they used to draw all the cartoon uh, frames all right so we have him uh, here um, I'm gonna put a little beard on my gargoyle because I think that would be cool and add a little extra to him so I'm gonna come here like where the chin is uh, at the chin and that tooth and I'm just gonna come down and go one, two, three, four, kind of like we did with the nose there. Then I'm gonna put some straight lines in it to kind of show that it, it's uh, um, got different layers in there. All right, so we've got the form of our gargoyle. We've got the legs and everything. Um, most gargoyles have wings, so um, for this one, we're going to put some wings on it. We're going to start here on the shoulder, and you just go, I'm sure you've drawn wings before, you just come out, and curve, and come down, right? And then you just put one, two humps in there, right? I usually put a little line here to show that that folds in there. And then we're going to do the same thing over here. Curve, boom, boom your line in there so we should be um, good to go on all that I know that you might have run out of paper because mine is sideways here but <laughs> you got it all right so now um, we're gonna add just a few details we're gonna put some ears on it so come up here on the side of the head and you're just gonna curve up and curve like that it's kind of like an S shape you see that there? And then you're gonna start at the tip there and you're just gonna curve down and over like that. So it kind of looks like a, a S shape or, or with a curve on it. So do the same thing on the other side and then down. All right, and then inside that ear, come down and just do a line across the top, a curved line. Because if you look at your ear, you've got that extra area up there that curves over and then you can put just a couple of other lines for detail inside there to show that it's curving around because monsters ears are always kind of curvy all right so we've got all that going now we want to show that he is a uh, gargoyle made out of rock so one of the things that you can add to it as a cartoonist um you add these little dots everywhere these circles and you put, you know, one, two, three here, maybe one over here, just a single one. So all over the body, find some different areas to just put these little circles to show that, hey, there's a texture in him. We don't have to cover him with rock texture to make it uh, that way. So that's one of the cool things about doing cartoons. It's not super realistic. You're just showing um, what's up. So just put some circles around in different places. Um, I think we are good to go here. I want to put some lines up here um, at the eyebrows coming down to show even more that he's kind of squinching to make him look even more kind of angry. So he's a happy kind of angry, silly gargoyle. Um, and you could put some uh, different lines in different places to show kind of where the arm might bend like that where the elbow is or the knee might bend. You could put a couple of lines there to add some detail. But we basically got it there. There's your car cartoon gargoyle.
Um, again, I thought that was a, a, a neat uh, creature. Not a lot of people draw gargoyles uh, right now because um, you don't we don't see them that much. But it's a neat mythological uh, creature, um, especially since it, it the <laughs> I found out the the background of it was you know um, garg gargling water it did to use to get water off of buildings so all right so now I'll get you a new clean piece of paper and i'll do the same here um as we get ready for the next one and again take pictures of your um of what you've drawn i'd really love to see them online uh, later that's one of the bad things about doing this is i can't uh communicate with you and see what um, you've come up with or different kind of ideas that you might have had while you were drawing. Um, again, if you've got an idea that you want to do or add to it, it's great. And hopefully, maybe you can add some color later. Drawings here today. And the next one here um, I wanted to look at is actually one of my favorites. Uh, He's uh, not technically a mythological creature. He's a cryptid. Most mythological creatures have to do with um, ideas of how things were created or, or you know, the way things work, you know. But uh, creatures and monsters exist all over. And cryptids are specifically ones that kind of people have made up over time. And uh, one of the the big ones is of course Bigfoot. So I wanted to draw a Bigfoot um, character. Um, there's tons of different characters like that, like uh, Chupacabra is one. And we actually have one in South Carolina. I'm not sure if you know about this, but it, he is called the Lizard Man. Um, so mm. I wanna look into that. There, there's sightings of the Lizard Man in South Carolina. Um, apparently he's attacked a couple of cars mostly. Um, so he's more of a monster than Bigfoot. Bigfoot kind of keeps to himself, but the lizard man is more of a dangerous kind of guy. So, um, anyways, but we're going to draw Bigfoot cause I love Bigfoot and this is an easy Bigfoot. Um, so we're going to zoom through this. You've done the eyes before this time I'm going to draw the, um, eyebrows first. Um, we're going to start with them. They're going to be again, pointing inward. So we're gonna do just a flat oval there and come over to the other side and mirror that and make another flat oval like that. Okay. And this should be kind of angled inwards. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw circles off of that. So we're gonna draw from this first one, you're gonna start on the inside you're gonna go down and curve around and make kind of a circle hanging off that eyebrow. Like that. And then you're gonna do another one here. Curve around, go back up like that. So he's got two big old eyes to sit around to forage and all that. And we're gonna do the same thing with the pupils. Let's put some big pupils in here, big circular pupils. Um, leave a little reflective area there again so that it looks more lively all right there we go and then for this uh bigfoot i'm gonna put kind of like a dog nose on him um which is like a triangle shape but with the sides curved so just right in between these uh Two eyes just make like a little triangle that's curved around like that, and you can fill that in. Usually, Bigfoots have hair all over their faces and everything, and it's kind of half hair and half uh, human face, but we're going to do it this way. And then this time, I'm going to do a closed mouth. Um, we're going to go right up here again, right at the eye. We're going to come down with our curve around under the nose and go back up and again put those little curves there at the ends of the line to show that it's pushing up on the skin all right so you got that 
I like doing these teeth. They look a little silly, so he's not going to be super angry. His teeth got angry features, but this this is a fun. I like it. It makes him look cuter. So we're going to start right there in the middle, and we're just going to do these round teeth, kind of like we did before on those little ones. But we're going to connect them all the way around like that. They're just little bumps around till you get to the other side, because some people draw the mouth wider or differently. So. The one thing you can do is make sure, okay, I drew four here. So when you do the other side, you do four again. One, two, three, four. And if you wanted to, to add to him, you could change one of his teeth out to make him pointed, like the second one's over or something. You could add that. But All right, so there we go. We got his main face. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to look at my paper and make sure that I leave room down here. Um, so I'm just going to put a little mark down here so that I have at least a quarter of the page left. Just a tiny thing there to keep up with that. All right, so now we're going to start at the top here. And I'm going to start right above the eye. And we're going to do these bumps that are basically like a J shape. You're going to start at the top here. You're going to go like a J that's kind of swooshed. And we're going to do those down the side of the body. And when you come down, you're going to kind of layer them like that until you get to like a, almost to the bottom, not all the way down. All right. So make sure you get the, get that extra J coming back around. So it looks like this fur that's hanging over there and it's not like a cloud. All right. Okay. So you get that extra bump that's towards the end of it coming back around. And then we're going to go back up and I usually put an extra kind of like a squished upside down U or something there to show that it's sticking up. You put a couple of those squished at the very top and then just do your J's again, squished together or backward. I guess that's the correct direction the J is supposed to go. All right, we're going to come down to the bottom and then at the bottom, we're just gonna go across with these kind of U shapes like that. So he's just a big fluffy furry ball, fur ball there. Okay. And then you go back inside of him and just again, like we did with the gargoyle, you added little circles for rocks. We're just gonna add some more of these little J's that are connected, just do a couple there. We're gonna do some down here. To show that hey, this is this is fur inside here, just like on the outside. All right, so well, there we go. We got a big furry guy here, not a typical Bigfoot, but a cartoony one. Um, so the next thing we need, of course, is big feet. So um, I've left room down here for the legs that we're going to stick out. So we're going to come down like right where that first eye is. You're going down to where your fur is. And then come down at an angle curve just a little bit over, like that. Is it on screen? I hope I didn't run out of screen room. Hang on a second. Let me look here. Okay, we're good. All right, now put a little bump, like a little C shape that's hooked to come back around like that, because that's the back of the ankle. And then this is the tough part right here. We're going to draw the foot. You're going to come down from that C shape and do the very bottom of the foot and curve around and you're going to come up like that. Oh. That's a hard shape. So again, it's kind of a J shape. All right. And then you're going to use that same, you're going to go to that same one and you're going to come back around and up like that. So it looks like a roller coaster going across there. And on the end of that is where we're gonna put our toes. So we got one toe like that, and then go behind that toe and do it again and again. So again, I'm just doing three. So his toes are sticking up in the air real silly. And then for the top is simple, just come over with the curve up and stop before you get to the other line and then go back up. All right. 
that's the hardest part right there. People hate drawing feet and toes and stuff because it has a lot more angles, but that's simple. All right, so now um, it's a barefoot, so we want to show that it has some hair, and this is a cartoon way of doing that. You could put little straight lines on it like this, just on the legs and the foot, and that shows, hey, there's hair there. It's a symbol for it. All right, now let's see if we can recreate this on this side, right? That's the hard part. So again, you start at where your eye is, you come down here, we're gonna draw the back part of the leg first. So it comes around and curves and you stop where that ankle is. Put the little ankle bump in there. Then we're gonna come, curve down, take the roller coaster up, take the roller coaster down, take the roller coaster back up. And then put your toes on the end. Like that. And then once you have that, just do the top of the foot again, go over and come back up. And put those little lines in there to show, hey, that's some hair. And the cool thing about this uh, Bigfoot is it could be a girl or a boy. If you wanted to do a girl Bigfoot, you just come in here where the lip is and you just put the top part of the lip in like this and you can uh, color it in to show that she's wearing lipstick. There. Does that look like a mustache though? It might look like a mustache. Make sure they have points on it maybe. Anyway, it could do that. It's a gentleman Bigfoot if it doesn't look like lips. All right, so we got that. Now we're gonna do the arms, and I'm gonna take it easy on you. So we're gonna go here, we're gonna start the arms up here right at the bottom of the teeth on the side. You're just gonna curve out a little bit, and then just do one, two, three little U's. There you go, you put the bottom lip on, that helps out. <laughs> that helps make the connection. I guess you could draw a tutu on her too if you want to. <laughs> Not that everybody wears tutu, but you know, that's a cue. All right, so the arm here, you just come down from the side there and make those three little U's, and then put one of your U's sticking out to the side and go back up. Put some lines on it and do the same on the other side here. One, two, three, silly cartoon fingers. There we go. Big, huge cartoon, Bigfoot, fluffy cloud guy. And you can go in and add fingernails to him if you want to, because they would have long fingernails living out in the woods and whatnot. So there we go. Bigfoot. All right. So that was a cartoony Bigfoot. The next thing I was wanting to look at was we've got, we've done uh, creatures that live um, in castles and uh, a creature that lives in the woods. So now I wanted to do a creature that lives in the water. So um, one of my favorite creatures, which I might be able to get a view of, can you get? Water creature. His name is the Kraken. So a Kraken is a mythological creature. Yeah, the, the big, get the, yeah, I've got a helper here that's going to help me. A Kraken is a mythological creature that lives in the ocean that uh, a lot of sailors used to talk about that would come, he would come up and he would destroy um, ships and he would destroy different things and take people underwater. And he had uh, um, giant tentacles and stuff. But he's also mentioned in a bunch of different movies and books you can read about. Um, here's this one right here. This one is from uh, the movie um, Clash of the Titans. Um, he's different because he's got four arms. Um, most of them had tentacles. Um, in drawings that you would see because they were based on giant squids. 
Um, so the sailors would see these giant squids, and there were stories about giant squids attacking and all that. But um, And we actually never had pictures of giant squids until recently. So for a long time, people didn't know what, what that myth was based on. But anyway, so Kraken's... A kraken is a sea creature, and there's lots of other sea creatures like mermaids and uh, um, different types of squid type creatures. Um, one of my other favorite ones is a creature from the Black Lagoon, which is based on a movie. He's a universal monster. Um, and so we're going to kind of draw a hybrid uh, uh, sea creature here. Um, I'm going to start again with the eyes on this one. Um, so up here near the top. Um, almost to the top, we're gonna to draw two eyes here. We're gonna make these eyes less circular. We're gonna go oval with them. We're gonna draw one there and then leave some space in the middle more so than we have in the past and do another oval over to the side. Okay, like that. Um, again, we can do um, some eyebrows that are gonna come down and make them look meaner because most of these creatures are kind of mean. So instead of doing just a uh, flattened uh, oval this time, let's go from the, from the bottom part down, we're gonna do the, that's a normal bottom oval like you've been drawing. But when we go back up, do those J things to show that, hey, this has got little scales or something on the top of his eyebrow. All right? So there are little bumps on the top of that. Like that. Okay. And then for his pupils, instead of doing circles, I'm doing these really long lined pupils like this to make it look a little weirder. Um, like that. And you can put, you know, a reflection in there if you want to. But I'm going to make them really long. All right. So. Let me make sure that everything is seen. Okay, I am drawing a little far up. All right, so there's that. We got the two pupils, and then we're going to come down here um, below the, the eyes, um, and we're going to start over on the uh, one side. And this time we're going to start a little bit lower. Usually I've been drawing these smiley faces. Well, this time we're going to draw a fish mouth. So it's going to be an upside down U shape here, um, and it's going to come up a little sharper. So um, we're going to start over to the side there, and you're going to come up to the middle and then back out like that. And then you're going to do the same thing at the bottom. So you end up with kind of like a diamond that has curved sides there. Okay. So once you have that, we're going to go back inside and we're going to make the lips here because we want it to look fish like. So you're going to start. On one side, you're going to come up and you're going to mimic that curve, but leave it a little fatter in the middle than on the ends. Does that make sense there? Mm -hmm. Do that there. And we're going to do that at the bottom there, like that. And so now we're going to come inside and we're going to put a bunch of triangle teeth because that is very piranha like and, and uh, shark like. Okay. And we're going to do the same thing on the bottom here. Put a bunch of triangle teeth in there. All right. Now we have that. We are going to go back up here to the top. And I did not leave a lot of room. But you can just put like an oval shape that comes down and goes back up, which would be representative of like a fin in the middle of their head. Um, get out of the here. Where was he at? Yeah. This guy right here has one in the middle. Oh, okay. So anyway, that's what that's kind of representing up there. All right, so now we're gonna go back up there and we're gonna start and we're gonna come around. I'm gonna go around the eyebrows. So what we're gonna do is start at that fin. You're gonna come and get to the eyebrow and you stop and you basically jump over and you come back around and you're gonna curve down beside the eyes and mouth like that. Right, and we curve down. And do the same thing on the other side here. 
and I might have to switch out my marker to a different color in the middle of this so it shows up, but it looks okay. All right, so now we have that there, and now I'm gonna put on the side of his head here two ears, um, but they're gonna be kind of like flippers. So you start at the top, and it's kind of like the bat wing or the wing we did. You're gonna do three U shapes and then come back like that. And then you can connect that middle part like that. So it's got like these weird uh, flipper ear things here. All right, and then he is a, an aquatic animal, so we want him to breathe underwater. So we put three little lines out. It kind of looks like whiskers here, but they'll also be our gills. Okay, so. We're gonna come down on these sides here to finish off the uh, creature. You're gonna come down, and it's okay how far you go, whatever, and you stop before you get to the end of the page, right? And then we're gonna come straight out from that line with the foot, and stop, and you're gonna do the same kind of thing you did here. Um, with the ears, we're gonna make little flipper feet. So. You stop there, you make a little curve and come out. We're gonna make three flipper feet and the last flipper foot should be in a little more. That makes sense there? Yeah. So now that we got that, yeah. Just curve back in and come up a little bit and then we're gonna put another circle on the back, a C shape on the back like an ankle, but it's just on the back of the foot there before we go back up. So then we're gonna come up, but you're not going all the way up. You're gonna stop uh, about halfway there and we're gonna go work on the other one. All right, so it comes down to the same area where you were before. You're gonna come out and make these little flipper things here. Curve back up and around. Well, that one wasn't quite wide enough. Here we go. Mm -hmm. That's not as hard as the big <laughs> front. Deal, you got a lot of curving around. All right, so once you got that, you can come up like this, All right? So we have that. And then, um, Kind of like that line up there. If you come down here in the foot, you can show that other toes line. I draw it at the top of that one on the feet to show that it's like a toe in the middle. And you can do that with this front one there. You don't have to do that, but it makes it look like there's little parts in between the webbings. Yeah. All right, so now, we got the feet and we got the head. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a line right across the body here. We're gonna start, leave a little bit of section here, but we're gonna do a line up in the middle there across the top. And then we're gonna do another line right there. Okay, so it looks like a belt. Okay, and then you're gonna do the same kind of thing we did at the bottom of the Bigfoot. We're gonna put these little J shapes coming down. Cause we're gonna come back in and add just a little detail and hopefully that'll look like he made a skirt out of, out of some uh, uh, underwater vines or something. So we're gonna turn a couple of those into a plant looking thing. So once you get across there, um, let's go over here and we're going to go to each one of those bumps. We're just going to come up on a couple of these and show that they're, you know, they're, they're longer than they really are. And then you can come in from the top where the belt is and come down in the middle of some of those because, you know, on plants you have um, that middle part of the leaf there. So you come down on the middle part of some of those like that. 
So it looks like he's wearing a uh, seaweed uh, loincloth thingy there. And then um, because it is a sea creature, we're going to put a couple of scales on it. And to do the scales, you just do these, uh, these little uh, uh, U-shapes. So we're just going to do a U. And then you come down to the middle of the U, and you do another U like that. And then you go over. So we're just going to do three there. And then maybe just two on this side like this. So it kind of looks like scales. All right. So there we go. We got that. Um, you can put uh, some scales on the leg too if, you're, if your legs are big and they need a little detail. You can put a couple on. All right. So now um, I want to do tentacle arms. So we've got a whole side here we can kind of do tentacle arms from. I'm going to start it right here below the mouth. And what you can do is uh, you're going to do an S shape. So you're going to start, and you're going to go out like a shoulder. You're going to come back in, and you're going to go back up like that. So depending on how much room you have on your paper, there you go. All right. And then what we're going to do at the end of that, we're going to just make a little line across, just a little thing line. And then you're going to start small, and you're going to work your way back to the body. And if it needs to go behind the body or whatever, that's fine. And it's going to get bigger as it goes back to the body. So you want it to be big at the body, like that. So if it needs to go behind the body or something, that's okay. Just jump it around. All right. So we've got a tentacle off of that side. And one way to show that that's a tentacle is you just go in and you put these circles in here to show that it's got little suckers. Those octopuses have those suckers on there like that okay and then on the other side we're just going to do we're going to curve out and down <laughs> hey chris yeah I uh, we have uh less than 15 minutes well we okay, have 14 great. minutes for questions <laughs> all right uh, yes, if you may have a question about anything um let me uh we'll finish this guy up and then we can do some questioning if you want to do that do that okay <laughs> all right so uh the other side again we're just going to come down like a u shape okay. over there out and over and then you're going to connect do a little place where you come out and then you're going to follow it back around and try to get bigger as you get back to it and then put your circles in there So there we go. There's our sea creature that's uh, <laughs> a mashup of some different uh, aquatic animals. Um, I think I covered different, you know, that we got a flying one and one in the water, one in the, the woods. So um, we did several different ones, hopefully. And you okay. learned a couple of things. That looks great, Chris. <laughs> um, do we... Did you? I wasn't sure if you wanted to do. Um, 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 we got fifteen minutes. Yeah, so I guess we could just do. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna ask you um, two questions before we get into the Q and A. Um, so, when did you start drawing, and what made you decide to make it a career? Okay. Um, that's a great question, and it's uh, hard for me to answer the first part because I don't remember not drawing. Um, I drew all the time growing up. My mom was a, a crafty lady, so she always had paper and pencils and stuff around, and if we needed something to do, it was here as a stack of paper, go at it, and so I was drawing from as long as I can remember. Um, so... Yeah, I just kept drawing through school and took art classes and she always encouraged me and my fa uh, my sisters to draw all the time and to do different uh, artwork. So thankfully I had a, a very um, positive upbringing for, for creating things. And so the illustration just fit right in there. Um, and then the second part of that question was, when did I decide to make it a thing? Well, 
uh, when I was creating, I knew that you couldn't, it was really hard. It is really hard to be a full-time artist that pays the bills, basically. <laughs> that is a, you see them all over. It's a really, really hard thing to do. And I realized that. And so I actually went into school um, as um, going into marketing because I wanted to be a graphic designer because I knew that it used skills that uses art skills i mean you use illustration to create all kinds of logos or different things like that or um, you can use photography for advertising i mean there's a ton of different uh, overlay for people who are creative um, to be in marketing so i went to do that and then while i was there also took art classes and of course i love the art classes and um I realized, hey, I could do illustration also as a freelancer. Um, and so eventually, after getting a job as a graphic designer, thankfully at a place where I did both graphic design and illustration, um, I went freelance. And so now I do freelance graphic design and illustration. So uh, basically, I guess that's a roundabout way of how when I decided in high school that I wanted to do something creative but it wasn't until uh, later on in college that I realized that, hey, I could do this. Okay. Um, so from the chat, the kids have asked, what is your favorite thing to draw? From the what? Yeah. From the chat, um, the kids have asked, what is your favorite thing to draw? Oh, <laughs> I love drawing robots. Um, okay. I've always loved space. Stuff. Growing up, I loved space. I guess Star Wars completely warped my brain, but uh, everything from when I was growing up. Um, so I love drawing robots. In fact, when I started doing freelance, I used robots to help me learn the program. It's called Adobe Illustrator. So every day I would draw a robot in Adobe Illustrator and I would do it in three minutes. So I did this thing called Three Minute Robots. So every single day I'd draw it. And then I started saying, hey, I'm going to start sending these out to my friends. So I'd email them out. So every day for a few years until I got to 500 robots, um, I was doing that. So that all that is still in my brain. And so I love doing classes. I do a class called rockets and robots that we draw robots. Um, so I really like doing, doing that the most, I guess. Okay. That sounds cool. What is your inspiration? Um, um, inspiration. Who is your inspiration? <laughs> inspiration um that's a, a, a another kind of uh hard question to answer um i get inspiration from everywhere from television to the internet to books to just being out and about um one of my favorite uh things to be inspired by are kids because um when they're younger the way they th see things and explain things um like uh, one time my kid explained that uh elvis sounded like he was made of butter and and he does <laughs> like yes he did the way his voice so like any like i've my daughter said that her foot was uh sparkly so like you when you have those tingles in your feet so to use sparkle to explain that that's what that yes that is what that feels like so to hear those kind of explanations of the world based on their their you know smaller vocabulary or what they've experienced is a really amazing thing to experience and i really enjoy that um and, a, and another big inspiration for me of course um is anybody who's creative and able to do for a living um which includes one of my heroes jim henson who did the muppets and, yeah. and uh, a ton of other things too he did movies um he did TV shows that people don't know about, but he created Sesame Street. Um, so Jim Henson is a huge influence uh, just to see the different variety of things that he was able to do. And he worked with other people. So I like working with other people to create things. Um, so it, it was inspiring to, to read about him and to learn about him. So I think that covers okay. creative things. Okay. I think we have time for another question. Um, Jessica, do we have another question from the chat? No? Okay. All right. So, <laughs> well, 
what I would like to do is to thank everyone um, so much for joining our Tween Tuesday program. Um, be sure to join us Tuesday, July 14th at 2 p.m. for author um, for our author talk with Mr. Re with Miss <laughs> Rebecca Petra. Um, and also for more um, fun at home, if you want to draw, uh, Chris, I don't know if you um, have seen Dee's book, um, but here's one um, called Drawing is Fun, um, Drawing Fantasy Figures. I haven't seen <laughs> that one or that robot one. That looks this really good. This one? Yeah, <laughs> I usually see all the robot ones. Oh, with Crayola. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Yeah, and that Crayola has a different ones. I don't know if you've seen this one. You see it in there? Oh, Aliens of Space. That's pretty neat. <laughs> and they also have this one over here. That one. That's that. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I know that, again, growing up, going to the library, the drawing and art section was always one of my favorite sections to go to. Um, and every time I go to um, a library, you, you guys always pull great books that you have in stock and some unusually it's things that I, I've never seen. So, uh, yeah, so for sure, I encourage anyone to go to the library and check out these books and draw them and and to keep a sketchbook keep all your drawings together try to do that because if you keep them together they don't get loose and thrown away and you can go back and say oh this is how I drew this that one day or you know so keep them keep all your stuff in a book and just go through it don't be intimidated by it and just go in there and and fill that thing up <laughs> it's funny you mentioned that because my art teacher um, professor um, my uh, printmaking professor, one of his things, one of his assignments was for us to fill a whole sketchbook with drawings. That was our assignment, and if we didn't have it done by the end, of course, yep. we would get a bad grade. Yes. But he always wanted us to fill that whole thing up with drawings. And you felt good <laughs> when you were done, didn't you? You were like, man, yes, I did. Yes, I did. <laughs> So that's the I thing to, to fill those books up and slide them on the shelf, put the dates in there, look at them later. There's ideas in there. So yeah, filling up sketchbooks for sure. And you've got it all together and it's chronological and it's, it's a, it's really is a great way to grow as an artist. That's true. Um, so I'm going to um, thank you again, Chris, for joining us today. No problem. <laughs> and, uh, and also I want to thank the audience for tuning in. Um, and come on and, um, and look forward to joining, uh, feel free to join us again on Zoom um, for our next program. And that program is June, July 14th at 2 p.m. Um, so you guys have a good day and I'll see y'all guys later. <laughs> Bye, thanks. <laughs> Bye.